Hi, we're back. <laughs> we studied a little bit about water baptism last time, and we're going to go into it more thoroughly now. Last time we talked about how to become a Christian. <laughs> and we found out that some, some of you who thought you were Christians probably were not yet. You needed to do a couple of things. And one of them, good idea, to be water baptized. Jesus set the example. It talks about Jesus being water baptized in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it must have been a very important event. And we'll read about the one in Matthew. Matthew chapter 3. Verses 3, verses 13 through 17. Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. John the Baptist, a man named John, and they called him the Bob Baptist <laughs> because he baptized a lot of people. It means he put them down in the water and he brought them up again in the name of the Holy Spirit or in the name of Jesus. And he um, saw Jesus coming. And he said, oh, oh, I'm, I'm not worthy to baptize him. But listen to what, what happens. <laughs> I'll read it out of the Bible. This is the New King James Version. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, not the other way around. And you're coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then John allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Wow, that's pretty spooky, huh? <laughs> but it had been told to John before that in another of the Gospels. It tells that John had been warned that this would happen, that a person would come and that when he baptized him, somehow the Spirit of God was going to rest on him and not leave, and that he would hear a voice telling him that this was his son. So it was not totally unexpected, but uh, it still was rather shocking for John. And Jesus 
was baptized just like other people were being baptized. He says, I want to take care of all righteousness. I want to do everything I'm supposed to do. And so that's, that's what he did. <laughs> Jesus was perfect. Jesus had no sin. He didn't have to repent. He didn't have to say, I'm sorry, Lord, for the things that I've done wrong, because he never did anything wrong. Other people who were being baptized repented beforehand, but Jesus didn't have to, because he didn't have anything to say he was sorry for. And this bit about the spirit descending, I, I questioned that. I thought, you know, how did they know that that was the spirit? But doves are pretty skittery animals. Doves do not stay <laughs> on your shoulder. They'll come down and then they fly away. But this one stayed there. And then the voice of we know it was God, but they didn't know at that time. A voice came out of the skies that said, This is my son, and I'm pleased with him. So Father God was glad that Jesus was baptized. Now, I thought this was a, you know, a, a good thing to do when I was a teenager. I was in a Presbyterian church, and the Presbyterians sprinkle. They don't put you down in the water. And so I had that done, and I felt different. Yeah, it was definitely a spiritual experience for me. But then when I was about 35 years old, I uh, was going to a Pentecostal kind of a camp and charismatic kind of a camp. <laughs> and the youth there were being baptized in a river and they were being immersed, put down all the way into the water and brought back up. And I thought, well, I've never really had that done, and that's more like what Jesus' way of baptizing was. So maybe I should do that. So I did. <laughs> I was baptized twice. Actually, I was baptized three times because when I was a little baby, my parents dedicated me to God. And I don't know if water was involved with that or not. But anyway, now I was thoroughly baptized. <laughs> and again, I felt different. It was definitely a spiritual experience. So after that, um, I knew for sure that I had received Jesus as my Savior. Before that, you know, when you just do it in your mind and you, you, before you're baptized, you think, yeah, I, th I, I remember, I remember last month uh, I invited Jesus to come into my heart. I, I think I'm a Christian. Yeah, I think so. But when you really go down in the water with the minister there and you confess your sins and you say, yes, I want to follow Jesus, they, you remember that. That is something you for sure did. 
not not kind of well maybe yes maybe no for sure when you went down in the water then you remember yes i belong to jesus i have given my life to jesus yes he is my god he is my friend he is my comforter yes Yes, I for sure am following Jesus. And so I think that's one of the main purposes of water baptism. When I was teaching in Bangladesh, I had a young man that was coming to church. He was Muslim. He was coming to church and enjoying the church and would not be water baptism water baptized because he said then none of my friends will speak to me my I'll lose all my friends and it was true you know because he was a different person when we go down in the water we die with Christ let's turn to Romans chapter 6 Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 9. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we are lowered into the water, it is like the burial of Jesus. When we are raised up out of the water, it is like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we're going in our new grace-sovereign country. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ. A decisive end to that sin, miserable life. No longer at sins, every beck and call. That's the version in the Message Bible. Yeah, when you go down in the water, it's like you die. You are no longer that person. And when you come up out of the water, you are born again. You are now living <laughs> with Christ, with Jesus Christ. And he is in your heart. He is guiding you. And he's your friend. Lord God, I pray that this will have a special meaning for everyone listening to it, that it will be life-changing to them, that they will understand that they are no longer the same person, things that they could not do before. They didn't have the ability before. Now they can do, because Jesus, Jesus is living inside of them. And the things that they used to want to do that were bad things, now, by the Holy Spirit, they don't want to do anymore. They want to be clean and living for God in Jesus name amen okay i'll see you again soon